lift up your heads O ye gates and be ye lifted up ye everlasting doors and the king of glory shall come in and be ye lifted up ye everlasting doors why because the king of glory seeks to come in the bible tells us in proverbs chapter 4 from verse 18 that the path of the just is akin to a light that shines are we together and the bible says that it shines ever brighter even unto the perfect day that means that in the economy of god he does not design men to be better in their yesterday than they should be in their tomorrow are we together now it is in god's design that our lives continue to be unfolding episodes of wonder that means the version of you yesterday should be far less than the version of you today when your tomorrow becomes worse than your yesterday something went wrong that the path of the just should be as a shining light that shines brighter and brighter even unto the perfect day so we understand from scripture that god is a god of advancement please listen carefully god is a god of progress he desires that we continually make progress it is in making progress that the father is glorified john 15 and verse 8 herein is our father glorified he says that ye bear much fruit by the fruit you produce and the results that you continue to command you will prove that i mentored you well hallelujah the bible says jesus teaching in the beatitudes he called us the light of the world the salt of the earth are we together now he says neither do men light a lamp and put it under a bushel but that it is put on a lamp stand and it gives illumination to all those who are within so it is god's desire please understand this there should be no confusion as to the fact that god wants us to make progress in life that god wants us to advance in as much as our primary assignment listen very carefully our primary assignment is the revelation and the glorification of the son in and through our lives that all that we do should finally culminate to the revelation of the son and the glorification of the same but that in so doing our lives should also reflect glory and beauty and color are we together now yes it is not god's design that while we represent him our lives continue to become a shadow of his grace a shadow of his glory no that is the reason why matthiadom and sacrifice means a lot to god because we were not designed in that default state hallelujah but then the bible is also very careful to let us know that life is in levels everybody say levels and that our journey is also dimensional in faces and that interfacing one face and one level and another sometimes can be barriers that make for access i give you an instance the the bible the bible is not careful to let us know that even in the design of the temple the outer court there was a partition are we together now that then led you to the inner court then another partition the veil the bible calls it that led you to the most holy place and so the concept of compartmentalizing life into dimensions is something that is consistent with the ways of god that means that while it is true that men can and should transit from one level to the other they must also understand the system that makes for access from one dimension 
to another dimension are we together now just because you have enjoyed a dimension or you have come to the end of a season does not automatically mean you will enter a new one you must sustain the intelligence in the spirit that can grant men the ability to transit let me tell you the proof of mastery in the spirit is your ability to switch seasons because there are barriers that interface between yesterday and tomorrow and if you do not know what to do when you come to the end of yesterday you will never enter tomorrow are we together first corinthians 16 paul is teaching the church in corinth and then in verse 8 he brings a very important information that would be the basis of my teaching tonight first corinthians 16 from verse 8 it says but i will tarry at ephesus until pentecost verse 9 it says for a great door and effectual he says is opened unto me that means that there is an opportunity there is i need to move to another level but then he says a door is what closes yesterday and opens today that the name of the veil and the mystery that interfaces a man's yesterday and his today and his tomorrow they are called doors a door is not a wooden object that closes a fenced area no a door is the name given to any authorized system of access that interfaces you between where you were and where you need to be it's called a door listen very carefully so he says a great door not just an ordinary door a great door is open before me hmm. doors are not metallic objects doors are not wooden objects architecture is a borrowed system from the realm of the spirit a great door write this down please a door is an authorized system of access two definitions the first is that doors are authorized systems of access a door and a gate all do the same thing the only difference is the span of their reach a door protects rooms gates protect territories please listen carefully they all interface gates interface between a territory and another and doors protect rooms so a gate can be open and you will still not receive what you should have when you enter the gate it you are in the compound but until the door is opened it is important for gates to open but at the point of possession what you need to be open is a door please sit down we have a very long journey this night are we together it says for a great door I'm standing at the edge of my yesterday ready to move into tomorrow but that there is a great door it is important to know what to do with doors i don't have the time but i would have read for you a very strange scripture pastor sir the bible says that in the land of sodom and gomorrah that when two men remember the two angels that came to visit lot are we bible students and then the bible tells us that some of these hedonistic people that they desired to meet with the men and lot even offered to give his daughter said do what you can do but please protect this man and the bible says the people insisted and the angels drew lot in and shut the door and struck them with blindness and the bible says they wearied themselves in front of the door in front of a door but it cannot open because they were blind please listen very carefully the reason why tomorrow looks like yesterday is because you didn't know what to do with the door so your tomorrow continues to look like your yesterday when a man's door is closed the only thing that grows in his life is his age nothing else grows nothing else grows are we together a great door and an effectual doors are authorized systems of access 
access to opportunities access to enlargement access to prosperity access to deliverance now watch this doors just like gates allow for movement understand this it's amazing that doors and gates control movement when a door is open it can allow people and things to go in people and things to go out are we together now if this door is opened it will allow for movement of people and things i wrote something down here that when a door is closed it brings limitation it brings delay it brings frustration look up please how many of you have lost the key to your door at one point or the other and you stood in front of that door you even have a window that wets your appetite the fruit is looking at you on the table but the key is missing the door is closed and you are standing as agile as strong as you are you become so frustrated you are looking for who to blame who to beat including god because a door was closed it is frustrating to stand before a closed door and yet many people cannot make progress in ministry make progress in life because number one they do not even know that from one realm to the other there are doors and until you know what to do with those doors ladies and gentlemen hear me you may remain in the same position for a long time time does not change things time only reveals are we blessed it is God's desire that we move from one level to the other but between one face of your life and another spiritually financially ministerially in your family there are doors and every door has a rule of engagement listen very carefully you must know what to do with these doors now the Bible another definition of doors that I will give you doors can also represent hindrances doors can also represent not just systems of access but hindrances hindrances limitations that a door can constitute a system of impedance and limitation to a man to stop you from going from one dimension to the other Goliath was a door he stopped the peace and the liberty of the nation of Israel he came and he roared from morning till night hallelujah so the subject of doors and gates is very important an authorized system of access remember that we want to make progress in life listen i've not found one man who does not intend to make progress with their lives we want to make progress financially we want to make progress in our knowledge of god we want to make progress in career etc that means when you find people limited is not a reflection of their desire i do not know anyone who will intentionally peg themselves at a level we, we are beings of growth we are beings of progress our consolation is that while we serve the purposes of the kingdom we also find ourselves making constructive provable progress are we blessed yes. and god organized this conference to end shame in the life of someone that that whatever continues to make tomorrow look like yesterday we must change it hallelujah the precepts of the kingdom are precepts of liberty the bible lets us know that when we find this truth they are life to those who find them he says this body of knowledge when you find it then it liberates then your life proves that the light has come because you will arise and you will shine for your light is come and your rising and your shining is proof that the glory of god has risen upon you are we together praise the lord so we're talking about systems of access here that 
from one level to the other there are doors that stand as they prove to you that you have come to the end of a season and you are about to start another you never see a door in your life until you come to the end of one season look at me when you enter a house assuming you want to go from the kitchen to the living room at the end of that kitchen you find a door that means when you cross that door you are no longer in the kitchen you are in another room you can be in the living room and you want to go to the bedroom is that true now you find another door when you get to that door it signifies the end of the living room and the beginning of another that means the mere fact that you are standing in front of a door already tells you a season is coming to end and another one is standing so doors are signs they are systems of spiritual timing they help you to know when certain seasons are about to come to an end if you are walking and you don't find a door don't give up keep walking when the season in ministry you are at a level where you start you just keep moving prayer fasting nobody seems to place a demand on your grace just keep moving you will get to a point where you will find a door and if you know what to do at that point you will open yourself to a season where you will wave yesterday goodbye and it will wave you back forever a door the red sea was a door it was a door that would separate the nation of israel from egypt forever or otherwise but they stood in front of that red sea it was a door how did the red sea open heather and tether how do doors open it did not go down the way the red sea opened was proof that it was a door it was not just water because when it opened the land was dry are we together now yes sir doors it says and be ye lifted o ye everlasting 